Hello everyone, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we are going to be talking about a topic that has come up again and again and again in comments and questions on the channel, and that topic is ground loops in PCBs. Now it seems to me that there is a bit of a misconception about where ground loops can arise, and if they do arise, whether or not you should even be worried about it. So we're gonna run over what are ground loops in electrical systems, and then we will reduce that down to what happens inside of a device inside of an enclosure, and then what happens on a PCB. Let's hop onto the whiteboard and get started. So on this channel, we've made a lot of videos about grounding, copper pores, connecting copper pores with stitching vias, connecting to a chassis or a metalized enclosure, topics like that. And there's one question that always comes up over and over again, and it seems that there's this perception that no matter what you do, you're gonna create ground loops, and that is generally a bad thing in your PCB. Vincent Nguyen writes, thanks for the video, it is very useful. How to avoid ground loops if the chassis ground is connected to system ground at the power connector. Here we have another question. Connecting ground pores together using vias at several places would cause ground loops. Am I correct? Doesn't putting ground pore on both layers cause ground loops? I've always wondered how they design ground and chassis ground when there is no direct connection to earth. Do they normally just ground one mounting hole on PCBs to avoid ground loops? I have just one question. When using multiple ground between signals can create some shielding and reduce crosstalk, doesn't it also create a multi turn ground loop? So obviously there's this perception that no matter what you do on a PCB when it comes to grounding, you're going to create some ground loops. To clear all this up, let's first look at the typical instance where ground loops actually arise in electrical systems. So to illustrate how ground loops arise, let's just assume that we have a world where we have two pieces of equipment. Piece of equipment number one, and here we have another piece of equipment Number two. Now let's just suppose for a moment that these plug into a wall outlet. So if you're in the US, you will have a wall outlet that basically looks something like this, and you will have your earth connection right here at this point, and it will eventually go back to ground. Here, same thing. We have this coming over to a plug. We have our three prongs. This makes our earth connection, and then it also goes back to ground. You might ask, what's the problem with these grounds? Well, what happens in an earth connection is that this is basically just a big metal stake that's nailed directly into the ground. And this is an imperfect connection between these two points in the earth. And so what you can get is you can get a potential offset that exists between these two earth connections. Just having a potential offset on its own doesn't really matter until you interface these two pieces of equipment with each other. So for example, if we were to run a cable with some signal, and we were then to run a shield alongside that cable, so we have a shielded cable connection between equipment number one and number two, we have now created a big loop here that takes this earth connection on this side, bridges it to this side, and now this voltage offset between these two grounds can then cause some current to flow along this loop. This is essentially a ground loop. Now this current that gets driven across this shielded cable actually brings up some interesting cable connection schemes between each side of this interconnect. So this is where you get some interesting advice as to whether or not you should use a resistor, resistor and a capacitor, just a capacitor. There are some different ways to do it. But essentially, whenever you have this shielded uh, connection across these two pieces of equipment, you can create this ground loop. So how do we eliminate this potential offset? Well, what we can do is, rather than connecting to two different points that already have a potential between them, we basically can just connect to one ground point, as you see here. So now, they share the same exact reference conductor, and then you wouldn't have this loop of current anymore. The other way is if you did have a ground loop, you could break that interconnect. Now, I think this is where you start to get some of those recommendations about connecting to earth at only one point in your PCB. Essentially, by only having one connection to that earth in the PCB, you've essentially taken what we've drawn here with two large pieces of equipment, with shielding and cabling and everything running between them, and you've collapsed it down to the scale of a PCB. You basically now have taken this plug and put it directly onto your circuit board, and now you've got your power coming in and your earth connection directly off of the circuit board only at one point. 
thereby eliminating a potential ground loop from Earth connections. Now, if we did have a ground loop going on in this system, what kind of potential offsets could we expect to then drive a current over this shielded cable? Well, let's take a look at some advice on Howard Johnson's website to see what those voltages might be. So here on Howard Johnson's website, sigcon.com, there is an article on cable shield grounding. And you can see here that there's a guy, Joe, who recounts his experience looking at the voltage offsets between the chassis grounds. And you can see here in his correspondence, the voltage offset between chassis grounds rarely exceeds 10 volts. So for example, if he were to put a 100 ohm, one watt carbon resistor in series with the shield at either end, you would then expect 0.1 amps to flow across that cable shielding. Now this page goes on to talk about some different methods for handling shielding connections on each side of that shielded cable. We'll put a link to this article in the description and I encourage you to go take a look at this article because it's very informative on the topic of shielded cables. So now we know what's happening when we have these earth connections that potentially create a ground loop. What about when we look at a PCB inside of an enclosure and specifically a metalized enclosure with an earth connection? Now here we have an example with a PCB and let's just suppose that this is a metal surface inside of a shielded enclosure. Now here, if we have a mounting hole going onto the shielded enclosure and we have another mounting hole here, Another instance where it is said you can create a ground loop is basically right here along this chassis into the PCB and then back into the chassis via these ground connections. How do we avoid this? Well, I think there are a couple issues here that give rise to this type of ground loop in this system. One of these would be reception of a stray magnetic field. If you have reception of a stray magnetic field in this loop, you then develop essentially a voltage offset between these two points, and then that can cause some current to flow along this loop, and that is essentially your ground loop. Now, of course, when this happens, what do you get? Well, you could get some coupling of that current into some of the signal conductors on your PCB, and then that could be registered as some noise. Now, I think the next point that comes up here is what happens if you were to, let's say, have this earth connection coming in here at one of these points. Clearly, we don't have two different connections back to earth. And here, we generally don't run a trace over from here over to all of these other mounting holes in order to then create this loop intentionally around this PCB. You actually do have a broken loop here, even if this earth connection does connect back to the chassis. So here this earth connection come in, and it, if it only connects at one point, you then have a path here into the chassis. The chassis does have a path here to this other mounting hole, but this other mounting hole doesn't have a path back over here to this earth connection. So you can use these mounting holes as chassis connections and you can even use them as safety grounds. For example, if you have a connector here with some shielding on the connector housing, all of that can be used to then access the safety ground. But again, because you're not putting a direct connection from here over to here, you're actually not creating a ground loop even in this case where you have this connection among these different elements in a metalized enclosure. I think here the thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to connect your system ground over to your chassis ground when you have this earth connection. The issue here is that you could then run a current through that earth connection and you end up then creating this loop of conductor here which could then receive a stray magnetic field. So when you have that connection between system ground and earth, you're then running a return current through the metalized enclosure and through that earth connection. And remember, that's not the purpose of an earth connection. The purpose of an earth connection is to provide a safety ground for everything in this system. So now let's take this and scale it down even further. Let's suppose that we're on a PCB. Let's look at the top layer just for convenience. Suppose I have my top layer of my PCB and this is some copper pour. And then we have a ground plane on the very next layer. Now, let's suppose this copper pour has some stitching vias. This is typically what you might see if you have to do copper pour on the top layer for some reason. You might then replicate that down through all the other layers in the PCB. Now, what are some of the dimensions involved here? Well, just as an example, let's say this is 10 mil 
or about 0.25 millimeter. And then typical spacing between your vias might be, for example, 120 mil or about three millimeters. Now, let's suppose that we calculate the inductance of this loop associated with these vias. So if you just take these dimensions, you take the relative permittivity of the dielectric substrate, you get L is equal to 9.4 times 10 to the negative 13th multiplied by this inductance factor, n squared, divided by whatever the depth of this window is. So this inductance factor could vary pretty greatly, but I think the message here is that the order of magnitude of inductance that you would expect here is basically 10 to the negative 12th Henry's, or one pico Henry. Pretty small inductances here. Just compare that with the inductance of a microstrip up on the top layer. The microstrip inductance for a uh, DK equal four laminate is gonna be about 7.5 nanohenries per inch of trace. So you can already see here that trace inductance is gonna be much larger than any copper pore inductance that you might expect. And so what's the message here? Well, the message here is that if you have stray magnetic fields that might induce any current in any of these copper features in your PCB, you should probably be a lot more worried about the microstrip than you are about the inducing a current in this copper pore. Yes, it's true that you can induce a current loop in this copper pore just from stray magnetic fields. However, you're gonna induce a much more noticeable effect in a microstrip due to its higher inductance. So to summarize, should you be worried about ground loops forming from stray magnetic fields or from potential offsets in any of these conductors in a typical PCB? I would say when you're dealing with copper pores and vias just like this, the answer is no, you really shouldn't worry about it. When you start to bring in an earth connection and a chassis, or you start to have multiple earth connections between pieces of equipment that are interfacing with each other, then the answer is yes, you definitely should worry about it. And there are some well-known methods for reducing those ground loop currents. Some examples include the use of isolation transformers, common mode chokes, or simply breaking the conductor that is encouraging that ground loop current to flow wherever it happens to be flowing. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. I know that this topic has been a long time coming, but we're always happy to address topics just like this as long as you leave them in the comments section. So always make sure to leave those comments and questions in the comments section. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks. We'll see you next time.